What's up everybody, Spurk is here and welcome back to Vampire and I've got to say I kind of like the music right now, it's quite dramatic. Anyways, in the last episode Oh yeah, it's, it's this guy. It's Calhoun who is hungry, I thought our old friend Clarence He's basically a vampire. Now, but anyways, we returned home. We were actually at home. And um, it's quite interesting that, um, you know, our house is over here. And the Escalon Club is right over here. It's like this huge ass, big ass house and he doesn't know what it means. It's, it's maybe he'd never really noticed it. Like he only said that this it is a quite a pompous house and not the fact that you know it's like really quite close to his house um so <laughs> i don't know let's let's just disregard this for a moment and go inside and meet the escalon club district loss if a district oh yeah health status drops below critical threshold it will plunge into chaos citizens will be reported missing the quest will be lost and dangerous creatures will begin roaming the streets. All right. That's the stuff, the critical. So if it becomes hostile, below the critical, th yeah, hostile, all citizens are gone lost and all the quests are gone too. Now, they have nothing to do with the main quest. Huh. Interesting. The Escalon Club. Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. To kick you in the I'm nuts! Dr. Jonathan Reed. Oh, now the door opens, eh? You little cunt. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. No Please problem. proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. Um, is it really that wise to just to the to leave all those dead people around here? Well, these are all, or oh, were they attacked? Ah, oh, maybe, maybe the proven bastards attacked no, over here already. There has been quite a battle here. Yeah, okay. I thought maybe they'd just leave their um, dead people that they eat I'm randomly sure around. The Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. Hmm. Maybe they don't. Maybe they ran out of money many moons ago and now they just live off like loans and stuff. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, so very, very interesting. History and purpose of the Ascalon Club. The Ascalon Club is an association of gentlemen sickly aiming for uh, the protection of the crown's interest. Found it in uh, that time, really? Why so late? To honor the per per perpetuated the legacy of my maker, William Marshall, the Earl of Pembroke, and true protector of England. All the members of the club must be good extraction and flawless moral fibrous. Since the club accepts mortal members who will be dully observed and or duly, not dully observed, not duly, eh, they will be dully observed, very, very, very dull, and valued as proper candidates for immortality. The goal of the club is to impose respectable traditions and behaviors amongst the good vampire society, but also to promote and expand the immortal um, hegemony of England. We are the troubled elite of British society. We are Ascalon Club, the holy lands held by Saint Gregor, protector of England, when the saint slew the dragon. Yes, a lens bearers, or as lens bearers ourselves, we vow to defend the empire's interests. But why? But seriously, why? What is the empire's interest? That's the bigger question, I guess. Arthur Pemberton. Welcome to the Ascot. So he has a, so my guess is, um, he has a mesmerizing level of eight and we will never get to a mesmerizing level of eight. Five will be the maximum. That's my guess. 
So he's like, unless, no, he's nobody in here. So yeah, he's no citizen. He's a person that may die. No, no, no. Why can I? No. <sighs> Sometimes I really don't get it. Like in so many games, there, were, there are games that, where they're asking you with every step you make, do you really want to do this? 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 Really to do this? And it can get a bit annoying, but you're always like, yeah, okay, fine. Yes, I want to. Yes, yes, fine. But then there are games where they never ask you anything, just like, well, now. You can go suck yourself up. Oh, fuck's sake. So, um, was was what I was about to say, like last episode, I started to tell the story of a squirrel. So, that squirrel, um, walked into my, um, apartment through a window. It was a, it was a sunny day, you see, and, um, it came in and had like already like seven or eight nuts, um, in its mouth. And, um, well, as always, I was just jerking off. So I was also naked and believe it or not, it, the, the squirrel took two more nuts in its mouth. It was quite, quite, quite impressive. So that's basically the story of the squirrel and well, of a squirrel going nuts. Are these old vampires? Maybe. Well, she doesn't look that old. What time is it? Is it really just 8? 2020? Ah, huh, maybe. A good digger. Blood absorption. So you absorb blood immediately. Hmm. That's interesting. That's an interesting thing. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I cannot enter. This door has not been unlocked. Seriously, only five shillings. Even poor people have five shillings lying around. Stupid rich people. Put some more money on the table so people can steal it for fuck's sake. What do we have here? Hmm. Key to the Ascalon Club basement. I have no idea where, where the basement is supposed to be and where the entrance is supposed to be, but maybe we'll find it out at some point. Noise. We got stuff. All right. Let's meet the Escalon Club. Hi, esteemed vampires. Hey. Why is nobody cheering the arrival of the champion? The champion of Earthel Realms. The champion of you all. My good friends, if I may have your attention. The doom of you all. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bancher was no match for him. Here, here, here. Here, here. But Fergal Bancher was a little bit, so. Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Let's. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I have been eager to make your acquaintance. I have heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes, 
The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? The best. She has proven useful, yes. She has proved to be helpful on many occasions. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes <laughs> to important decisions. <laughs> My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Good. Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Good old uh, sexism. You offer the same fidelity nice stuff. To the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of this scowl plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Um, why not? That's the question. And the third one, why not? Why are you suddenly so friendly? The last time I met one of yours, he tried to kill me. Are you referring to Fergal? He was the most useful of servants, but he was just a servant. You, on the other hand, Doctor, proved yourself much more worthy. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? Um... No, I do not. Maybe it is a concern of his. If he has an answer for that, I won't, I don't mind. Or I might pissing him off for now. But I'm, I'm like really, really sure that we're gonna fight Lord Redgrave eventually. I mean, look at him. He's like a Bond villain par excellence. No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club and to serve me as such. Serve you? Before I accept, I have so many questions. I don't serve Please everybody. Ask, what does it mean to be a member of the Ascalon Club? It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. But what does the Empire want? What is the Crown? Is it the King, the Queen, the people? Or whatever you say. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire. But the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I uh -huh. supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members. And I do appreciate obedience. Well, he appreciates it, but so I don't really have to. What is the Ascalon Club's <laughs> express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. No, oh, no, the good, good knight. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. <laughs> All right. So, I guess I can only join. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. 
Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. Totally. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. One of this us. Is one of us. This is blood pure. One of us. One of us. Well, speak, Dr. Reed. In front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall. Speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? I guess so. Yes. I will. <laughs> then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Yeah, you said that already. Actually, the backbone of um, the nation of England, England is um, the fact that it's a fucking island. That's it. So take this pen, shove it up your pie hole, I mean your pee hole, or your pie hole, one of it. So it starts to bleed and then you put that bleed in right. Or there. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One, One of us. us. One of us. <laughs> ah, I knew it. One of us. One of us. Fuckers. So, little douchebag here. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Good evening. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. Oh, of course. I'm perfectly fine, you m old maggot. I feel perfectly fine. Do I have cause for concern? Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Ah, uh, you're that fucker. You're famous. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. So you don't dare, you little cocksucker. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir! It's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. <laughs> Good one. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. Because it grants modality. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. Well, you hope that you won't die, right? Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. Are you sick? Pers what can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member, and a dying one at that. Mr. Dawson, of Dawson and Dawson, the wealthiest man in England. 
It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. Of course cast not. cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. Of course. Of course. You have no interest in immortality. Of course. You only have the poor, poor people of the city in mind. Of course. Of course. What do you know about the Guard of Prewin? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Yeah, well, he's right about that. Now, how about we bite him in his neck and then there are also his enemies. Maybe he doesn't really want to become immortal. Maybe he knows what the price is and he says he doesn't want to be immortal. That's one more reason to make him immortal. That bastard. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. Yes. Apple. <laughs> <laughs> what is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Oh, for fuck's sake. Money can solve everything, but it can solve a lot of things. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. Build that a wall! Formidable, Build that wall! Unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. It's efficient. <laughs> I don't think it's really that efficient. Unfair. It's dangerous. By doing so, you would create two separate ghettos. What if the disease gets past the wall? The results would be disastrous. Not if we eliminate all suspected cases of infection as soon as they appear. A necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns. Decisiveness is what the city needs. And it needs it now. It needs it now. It's needed it now. It needs it now. It needs it now. It needs it all. Hello? Shit. We only talked to one person now. Fucking hell. There's a couple more. Can I talk to you too? No? Douchebag and douche dick don't want to talk to us. As face and ass butt don't want to talk to us. All right, Lord Hardgrave. Well, um, it's nice to stand around here like a like a crazy rich person. So, Lord, that went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Bearer. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic. And your findings were quite alarming. So you fucker was spying on me, you little son of a gun. You were spying on me? Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Yeah, I guess it was... 
Um, you know I killed him. Of course he knows I killed him. We just talked about it before. You do know I killed him? Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Because Fergal he's dead. Mancha was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No, he was a Volkod. All muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed. Ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. Yeah. So these were supposed to be werewolves? Really? Huh. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally. But I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? Yes, conversations. <laughs> Let's continue. Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. Hmm. But they are the victims. Some Skulls are peaceful, yeah. I have met peaceful and wise Skulls. To exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Skulls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. The mesmerized level increase. So we are now in level four. How is your invent? I have a few. All right, but all right, you but made quip, me swear bitch. on the blood of William Marshall during my initiation ceremony. Why was that? William Marshall was the most glorious knight who ever lived. He served five kings, and was a living example of probity for all. And he was my maker. William Marshall was a vampire. Is this some sort of joke? Wait. Could he be my maker? That would be joyful news. For it would mean he still walks among us. But alas, the great knight has left this world for good. Why is his blood so sacred to the Ascalon Club? He was simply the greatest defender of the realm we have ever known. I fought by his side at the Battle of Preston, and he made me his progeny following the fight. What can you tell me about the Great Hunt? It's a major concern, and I'm convinced we'll only get a satisfactory conclusion by putting an end to the epidemic. I have already met Geoffrey McCullum. I am certain he will persist until he has killed every last vampire. The Guard's current successful recruitment campaign is driven by the ravenous behavior of the Skulls. I see. So without the epidemic creating Skulls, the Guard could not convince anybody of our presence. Exactly. Once we have put the epidemic behind us, we need only wait until the Guard grows old and weak. Time will once again become our ally. Well, that's one way to do it. Just like, well, I'm just going to sit here for the next 60 years in my house. Thank you very much. What about the risk of a full-scale attack here? Jeffrey McCullum is a daring leader. 
That is exactly why so many of our number have left the country until things improve. Well, but not me. Didn't they already I found um, this club. attack I'll here? Because there were some dead people downstairs. May I ask you about the mortal who attended my initiation? Mr. Aloysius Dawson. A member of the club does not normally ask questions about other members. We trust each other mutually. But he is immortal. But Mr. Dawson is mortal. Are you not afraid he might reveal who you are? Especially to your enemies. Aloysius Dawson is a man of his word, as are all of us. This is the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. We do not grant access to the unworthy. And yet, we are here. And I'm telling you, we're not worthy. Oh, no, we are not. So he really is a member, then? Indeed. Only the most eminent members are allowed to attend such ceremonies. Even if I admit some of us fled during the first hours of the Great Hunt. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Godspeed, Dr. Reed. Goodspeed, Dr. Redgrave. Um, wait, doesn't this blood thing turn up now? Oh, for fuck's sake. No! Where's the blood thingy? No! There must be a blood thingy. Fucking hell. No! You assholes! Fucking bastards! No! We wanted to talk to our maker. No! 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 So, how do I get into the cellar? I have a key. Oh, there it is. The door has been unlocked. And the door opens in the wrong direction. There you go. Now let's go into the cellar of the Escalon Club. What do we have here? Apparently, nothing much. That is actually, actually quite, 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 quite disappointing. We have a letter of the recreational use of blood. As Ascalon members, we always tend to respect etiquette. We are and always, we are in all ways members of the good societe, sometimes recognized as public figures. Do we do not find our delight in orgies and bloodbath? Well, that's fucking boring. Like, why not? Like, if you have eternity, why the fuck not? Seriously, what else are you supposed to do? Especially if they're waiting out until the Proven guys all die. What the fuck are you supposed to do? Except for orgies and bloodbath. Especially, I mean, back in the day, there were no computer games. There were no movies. Well, movies, yes, a bit to some extent, but... Dude, what does... What, what else? What else? <sighs> like our adversaries assert we do. Well... They should assert correctly. And if one of us were caught in such caricatured and immortal act, or immortal act, we would receive, or he would, oh God, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry, I need to go to sleep. Um, he would receive the appropriate opprobrium, yes. But what about the blood? What about the blood? And who thinks about the children? What about its recreational use? How could we deny the ecstasy the vermilion ambrosia brings us? And with what else could we toast it? As any good fraternity should. To answer this delicate question, the law of conduct inside the club goes as follows. As long as the original mortal vessel is not brought inside our walls, each member is allowed to drink whatever he wants. For his own usage or to share with friends well sharing is caring that's what my girlfriend always says drink what you want <laughs> deal the way you want with the original vessel but never inside the club unless a person authorizes it and on some special occasions when we have orgies and blood baths which is basically every monday tuesday wednesday is a pass thursday and friday on the weekends you know everybody can do whatever he wants and that's basically the Escalon Club. 
So really the, the whole point was to find this piece of paper. Apparently so. Apparently that's the way it is. Okay. Guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure to become a measure a uh, measure a member of the Ashkelon clip. And in the next episode, well we're just gonna continue doing some shit here in the East End, West End, we're in the rich people district. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you then. Bye.